Crystal, catch us up. Tell us what you've been up to. But before that, give us some background because I'm acting like everyone knows you like I do. So just give us, give us some background. Okay, so I am a former student athlete. I decided to go the, ju uh, the JUCO route. I blew out my knee. Um, so then I ended up going to Henderson State University, which is a small Division II school in Arkansas. Started my first business there, and what I found out is I, if I know I could do it, even though, I, yes, I was um, a student athlete. Yes, I was averaging about 15 points a game. Yes, I was involved in SAC and all the other things that student athletes are able to get involved with. But I knew if I could do it, other student athletes could do the same. Uh, I went to uh, then I ended up going to the University of Arkansas for my master's program. Worked in college athletics, so I worked with three women's teams. And what I saw there was that a lot of other student athletes wanted to create businesses, but they didn't have the resources. And if you know the University of Arkansas, they are in the SEC, so one of the top five power schools. So it's like they have all these resources, but they didn't have the resources to help those student athletes at the time. And that was one of the reasons why I created my company, Student Athletes Unite. So we help student athletes create career and business opportunities. Uh, we do that through two ways. One is my online accelerated program that teaches student athletes how to create businesses, stay eligible, and explore entrepreneurship as a career. And then the second one is understanding that every student athlete is not going to become an entrepreneur. Um, I have a curated newsletter that sends out every month with paid internships, graduate assistantships, and fellowship opportunities. And then I'm currently a VC in residence, so a venture capital in residence at a venture capital fund in New York City. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. There's so many qualifications and you're doing so many amazing things. What, what stuck out to me was uh, you've been doing this before this kind of got popular, this mm -hmm. new phase of student athletes, you know, being able to use their likeness, use their branding, use their uh, name. What parameters do you put in place for these things to, you know, take shape? Like, how are you able to do it without um, stepping on any toes before, you know, it kind of got popular? Yeah, so in 2016, um, I actually presented what I wanted to create for student athletes to the University of Arkansas. And at the time, they were like, oh, just create a business plan. But when you think of business plans, you think of like 15 pages. Mind you, I just created a business plan for my company. So I was like, oh, so you want me to create another 15 page business plan for a program? Um, and so at the time, it was like, well, we love what you're doing. However, it's a little bit too innovative for right now. We want you to focus. We will, we will love for you to focus on career, personal development, but it's like everyone is doing that. A lot of people are still in this space doing that. But what I wanted to make sure that I make an impact in student athletes' lives during college athletics as well as after, because again, everyone's not going to go pro. So mm -hmm. what happens when you don't? But if you have someone or something that still allows you the creativity and the income, then you can do that. But as far as the parameters, I have a lot of support within college athletics. So now what they do is they know that I'm able to do this. They send their student athletes to me. They'll send me like either through text message, through email. I have, I have one student, uh, I have one uh, administrator. She'll, she sends me a DM. She's like, Hey, I already talked out to this athlete. This is who she is. She's going to follow you. And that's, that's how I've been able to, that's how I've been able to like go around it because they trust me enough and know that I do the work, but also make sure that these athletes stay eligible. No, that's the power of good work. And speaking of good work and, you know, referrals and stuff like that, can you talk about, like, how important it is moving forward for student athletes to make sure they have the right team, you know, you know, take advantage of their counselors, take advantage of their resources. But now with, you know, the, the ability to make money, there's going to be, you know, marketing agents that are going to try to take it, uh, get involved. You know, there's going to be, um, you're going to have to get, you know, financial advisors probably at a younger age now. So can you talk about this, this, this step? Yeah, so for what I encourage student athletes is, like, go with people you know. Like, again, it's six degrees of separation, I feel like, in life. So you may not know a lawyer, but your mom's friend may know a lawyer, and they're going to do right by you just because they know your mom or just because they know you from somebody else. So they're not going to do you wrong just based off because, you know, because I, I, there's an example that I have that my brother, again, you know my brother, Kelvin, and, um, and he connected me to someone in compliance. And she was like, Chris, I'm not going to do you wrong just because I know your brother. Okay. And she said, athletes have to understand that is that you want to make sure that you have people around you that you know and that's going to trust that they make sure that you're okay. Um, so that's what I tell some student athletes because, again, like, there are going to be people coming out the woodworks. And I think, I think, I don't know if I posted it or you posted it, like, 
in next year, people are going to come out the woodworks thinking they know everything and like trying to get close to that student athlete. Um, but right now, what I want student athletes to start looking at other people and like researching before this goes big, because again, like people are just going to like, well, I was following you last year. No, you weren't because yeah. I already have somebody in this space and I trust them and I know them because we built this relationship for the last six months before this even went public. No, that's true. That's that's smart. And I think it's even more important to, you know, for the student athletes that may be listening or tuning in, you have to even be harder on the people that you may know, because they might take advantage of being close to you and, you know, mm-hmm. using that emotional blackmail. So, you know, just right. because you have, you know, whether it's a family friend referral or even your own family, you have to right. be just as hard, make sure you're asking the right questions. But no, I really appreciate your advice. Um, in your book, you know, great book that you wrote, we're definitely gonna have that somewhere in the show notes. Um, you talk about, and you spoke about it earlier, you know, not everyone's gonna go pro. Um, mm-hmm. It's hard to hear that as a student athlete, you know, whether you're in junior college, you know, mm-hmm. division two, NAIA, D1. Um, so how, like, what's the mindset around, like still focusing and putting your effort into like developing in your sport, but also mm-hmm. having, you know, plans outside, whether it's entrepreneurship, business, things like mm-hmm. that so I give the examples of LeBron I know that's kind of like the role model for everyone <laughs> but it's like he still is able to focus but again he also has a team but he also does stuff outside of sports um eventually the ball is going to stop like Kobe Bryant like yes he played the last maybe 20 years in the NBA but again like the ball eventually stopped but he prepared himself for that time whether it was making connections or whether it was investing in companies uh whether it was taking those deals with the vcs so it was just a lot of things that they were doing yes still focusing on their business but you also have to make time for what you want in life even if it is after sport um so what i encourage in athletes yes you can focus um like focus maybe in the off season focus on your business in the off season and then in season that's what you do focus on your sport but once off season comes as soon as your eligibility or your um, season is done okay cool I I have four months to go ahead and make an extra 300 500 dollars in my business and then maybe once you get back into season maybe you implement different strategies or implement uh, implement any automation systems that you need to still keep generating income while you're still playing your sport maybe get your younger sister involved maybe get your mom involved so they can still help you with that business Uh, because again like you knowing what I know now, like I'm most likely going to cut my mom a check for a little, like, like help me. Cause yeah. I think I cut her like a referral fee from like what she did, like maybe like a year ago. And I said, Hey mom, I know you helped me. So I'm gonna give you like a hundred dollars. So. No, that, that, that's the power of keeping, you know, relationships obviously it's different cause it's your mom, but you know, right. that's, that's great. Um, so you talked, you talked about some of the lessons you learned. What would you do if you were to start um, again as a freshman or what advice would you give for, you know, the freshman coming in? For a freshman coming in, um, get as many contacts as possible. Um, and not even contact, but relationships. Um, grow as many relationships as possible because those relationships not only will help you in business, but in your personal and professional life. Um, I still have those personal relationships with the Dean of Education back at the Houston State University. And, and then I still have a relationship with the president of the university. So it's just like those things that if I need it, I can give him a call or I can email him and he'll email me back. But it's because of the relationship that I built in 2011, now it's 2020. And I still have that relationship from nine years ago. Um, so I was like, I would try to build as many contacts and as many relationships as possible as a freshman and then monetize that. That's a great point. I would, I would love to do like a survey asking how many like former student athletes still have their like athletic counselor or academic counselor like on speed dial like that would be a great um, we, yeah you should definitely do that oh uh, no i'm gonna leave that that's your lane yeah that's <laughs> 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 but um you, you know you, your big thing is entrepreneurship so for the student athlete that's you know you know starting from the ground up bootstrapping right i'll, I'll I want to ask you like a you know double question what's more important you know having the structure the foundation or making sure like oh, all right this is like viable first like i know it can make money um you know whatever it may be or is it like what 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 should an athlete or student athlete for for whatever matter like how how does it all work in the terms of entrepreneurship because they don't really have a starting capital right um 
again, I understand they don't have a starting capital. Even I didn't, um, but I used my Pell Grant um, because, again, like I was on a scholarship, so I was able to get that type of money back, um, and I was able to use that as capital. Um, but I also, like, what you can do is help validate, but you can build and then measure and then pivot. So say, for example, you start a T-shirt company and no one buys your T-shirt. Okay, what did I do? The, what did I do and why didn't it work? Okay, maybe I didn't market it. Okay, why didn't you market it? Why were you not able to that, do that? And so for, you know, with NCAA, NCAA athletes, they're unable to market on their social media pages. And so what I told student athletes is like, you cannot market it, but your mom, your sister, your brother, your friends, and you don't have to just say, hey, you know, I got this cool shirt from Kindness. And okay, well, that's a dope shirt. Well, I'm going to buy it because you wore it. They don't have to know it's you. So it's like you have to use those, I call them like your most valuable supporters. So instead of like uh -huh. MVPs or like your MVSs, and those are your most valuable, uh, most valuable supporters. So they're going to support you because they like you, they know you, they trust you. So as long as you have those people around you, that way you can help validate your idea. And if it didn't, doesn't work, okay, pivot and try to figure out like what to tweak. Kind of like within a game plan, like you may go in with one quarter thinking this is how you're going to play defense, this is how you're going to play offense. Well, they're stopping this. So how can we tweak it or what's the next play that we can do to still make that basket? No, I like that. I like that. It's almost like you're like a silent investor for your own, like, you know, mm -hmm. project. Right. No, that's amazing. Right. So, so like moving forward, obviously, you know, there's these new rules coming into place. Like what are you most excited about, you know, from the, from the, from the whole project, like, you know, from the student athlete side, from the key stakeholders that are going to be involved, like, what are some things that, you know, you're excited about? What are some things that you're worried about? I think as far as exciting or excited for is for people like me, not, yes, people of color, but also like the Division II players, the Division three players, um, because they aren't able to have a big platform like Division I. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, the non-revenue generating sports. So, like, the tennis, the golf, the softball, the baseball. Um, they're able to go back to their hometown, put on a clinic, and make money off of that. They're able to actually have a t-shirt line or a startup company, and people can donate to that uh, or to give to that or invest in those companies. And so I'm just seeing it that they are actually able to get paid off their name, image, and likeness, regardless of what division they're a part of. And so that's kind of like what I'm excited about. Um, as far as like what my concerns are, is that those top 2% of student athletes, um, they're going to be well above their head. Because with influence or marketing, you know, it's kind of like, well, if you, I pay you $5,000 for you to, to brand flat tummy tea. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. Well, first of all, I have a flat tummy. I mean, I have a flat tummy because I work out all the time. I'm a student exactly. athlete. So I have no choice. But it's like you are, you are, you are doing that for your followers. Yes, you're getting like paid five thousand dollars, but you don't even take that product. And then it's only going to be a one off. It's not going to be like a four year loan deal where you continue to promote that product. It's more so like, oh, I'm going to get $5,000 for this. I'm going to get $5,000 for this. I'm going to get $5,000 for this. So it's going to confuse their followers. Like, okay, well, I don't know what to buy from you. Yeah. So I think that was – so basically, like, influencer marketing is made – for me, what's going to be, like, the biggest thing and my biggest concern because of what the landscape is now with influencer marketing. And I feel like it's going to trickle down to student athletes, and they're just going to be happy that they're getting money not knowing that it may affect their brand long term. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, you got to be authentic. And, you mm -hmm. know, what I've been worried about and what people have been talking about is like, how will it affect, you know, the team environment? You know, if I'm promoting this, my teammates promoting this and we're competing and then we're doing one off projects and say something happens, you know, um, it's going to be real interesting to see, like, you know, PR is going to have to be involved now, you know, right. Uh, legal counsel is going to have to be involved financial like looking over these deals um so um as as good as it is to um, athletes are going to have these opportunities it's important that um you know people are you know getting protected at the same time yeah and and as far as like the stakeholders what i'm worried about is that they don't have the bandwidth 
Um, because again, like, yes, the University of Arkansas can add extra people to their roster, to their athletic development team. That's totally fine, but not Henderson State University or uh, Harding University. So the smaller division too, they usually have one person that does everything or they may do like compliance and then one other person may do like student athlete development or she's also student athlete development slash academic counselor. So they're going they're not going to have the bandwidth for that so it's like a lot of these students are going to fall through the cracks or a lot of these deals they may become bad deals because student athletes didn't have any resources to actually help them so i feel like that's as far as the stakeholders that's what's going to happen for them that's a great point and a mentor of mine told me actually like if you're talking to any people that are interested in sports careers you know ncaa compliance is a is a field that's gonna you know grow mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. of the the you know what you just said yes. so it's, it's going to be really interesting moving forward to see to see what happens um i have another question about what you're currently doing you said on uh, venture capital and re- residence so can you explain uh for some people that may be interested in what what that is yeah so venture capital uh, venture capitalist in residence um is basically a position that is dedicated to people that want to get a start in the vc world but they don't have the experience um, to do that. And as you know, my experience is like sports management, um, pro athletics, college athletics. So yes, I've looked at deals and I've been a part of deals through my brother, but never like by myself. Mm -hmm. And so I use that experience, not only from like the stuff that I did with him, but also my experience with student athletes and how I've been able to help them to get that position. Um, And so that's technically what it is. Um, it's a very highly paid, like I call it internship position, um, because I'm basically learning all the ins and outs and like the infrastructure and the due diligence process and like all the way like deal flow. So all these new terms are going over my head. I'm just like, I'm going to read a book to like understand more of this stuff. Um, but Is there a it, book you'd recommend? Um, I'm currently reading Venture Deals. Oh, um, good book. That's, that's I, a game changer I right there. I'm going to grab it because it's on my bed, but I'm like, no, I can't. got to stay in the camera. No. But um, that's currently what I'm reading now to learn more about that, which was recommended by my brother. Yeah. Um, so he makes sure great, he... Great recommendation. Uh, yeah. So I told him, like, I need to learn. I need to get this learning curve, like, quicker because I'm trying to hit the ball running, learn as much as I can. And, um, but yeah, so that's technically what it is. And then... They are a really good group of women and men that are doing amazing things. They are investing in people of color, um, as well as the LGBTQ community um, and um, just women-led businesses and startups. So it's amazing to be a part of that. No, that's really cool. Um, you got any deals you could share? No, I'm just kidding. Mm-hmm. I was going to ask you. No, I know you can. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, what I liked is that you talked about, you know, in residence, like, you know, the growing pains of learning and like, you know, learning from somebody first. So can you talk about that dynamic, you know, as a student athlete, especially now you talk about entrepreneurship, but how important is it to learn from somebody too? you know, like yeah. you know, someone and that's gone through the ropes. Right. And I actually had this conversation with one of my student athletes I talked to today. We talked for an hour and a half crazy, <laughs> but um, I was telling her, it's like, whatever phase that you're in, you're going to need a coach. Because, again, you needed a coach when you first started track, that the sport that she's in now, um, basketball. I always had someone holding my hand through the learning process, the learning curve. And then they kind of let me spread my wings, and I, I was able to move a little different. And I said it's kind of it's similar to what I'm doing now, and that's how I've always treated myself and with, 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 uh, with even in my business. And so – I feel like that's what I've been able to learn as far as the learning process, that you always have to have a coach, regardless of what stage of business that you're in. And right now, that's what I'm doing. And I feel like, again, I'm learning something new from scratch. I feel like when I first started playing basketball at nine years old, and I was frustrated because it was taking me like an hour to make 10 shots. And so um, it's definitely a learning process, especially with the due diligence. It took me like an hour and a half for one company. And my brother, he was like, yeah, it takes me about five minutes. And I'm like, how? (laughs) I don't, it's unbelievable. So, um, so I know, I feel like I'm like part of the Beecham family because I know the brother and you. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I'll, send, I'll send Kelvin a deal. He's like, yeah, nah, so, so this, this, this. Oh, wait, what? How, how did you see all that so quick? So 
Um, yeah. It's just like with repetition, yes. with repetition, you get, uh, you get better. So. Yes. And so I'm still, I'm, I, I cut it down to about an hour now. So again, I've been here for about a month and about, probably about four to six weeks. And so it's been good, but again, it's still a learning process. No, that's what it's all about. You know, uh, learn as you go and, you know, depending on who's, who's teaching, you can learn more uh, right. on a faster, uh, faster incline. Um, right. But, you know, you talk about deals, obviously, you know, VC deal flow is different from like brand deals and contracts, but what are some key points that, you know, student athletes should like look for when a possible deal is going through? I know they'd have to deal with deals in the sense of which college they're going to, you know, whether it's scholarships that are going to be offered you know, different organizations, majors, different things like that. So what are some key points that they should be looking for? For as far as brand deals or like, um, like, well, I guess it's the same thing, scholarship. Um, I think knowing what you're going to get out of it. And, you know, everyone says, oh, you should read the small print, but you definitely should. But also mm -hmm. have someone that can also understand it for you. Uh, thankfully for me, even within like my scholarship, even within like the deal that was sent for my VC and residence, I reached out to people that knew this more than I did. Because again, like it looks good, but I need to know for sure. And so as far as like my scholarship, there was one piece of information that said they would not give me my Pell Grant, but the coach told me different. So I'm like, well, this is what I saw. I checked with my, you know, I mean, I checked with my college yeah. coach and he said this. So I need to know which one, who's lying. Like, which <laughs> one, like who's lying? Yeah. And so um, they were able to make that correction and then send it to me and then I signed it. But if it wasn't for me looking over it and just like, you know how some people just sign like, oh, I trust what the coach is saying. Yeah. yeah you can trust him, but you need to double do check. You need to double check that trust. And so, um, and even with the VC and residence deal, it was like, okay, it looks really good. Like the carry and the fun looks really good. The salary looks really good, but I need to understand what all it entails. And some of these things that kind of like some of the words, like in venture deals, like some of the words are foreign to me. So I need to know. So I sent it to Kelvin. Kelvin, he was like, well, I kind of understand it, but I want to send it to somebody else. He sent it to somebody else. I had a conversation with him. He was like, you know, this is a good deal, but they're still raising money. So you need to ask these type of questions. So I was like, good, go back to the lady, ask her these type of questions. I said, I'm just letting you know, this is the person I sent it to. He gave me this feedback. And she was like, that's amazing. I'm glad that you were able to send that off and that you were able to get your questions answered and come back to ask me some certain questions so I can be able to help you understand what's happening. No, so that's again, important. That's really yeah. good. Yeah. So oh, I didn't mean to cut you off, my bad. No, it's cool. Like, that was pretty much the end of it. But just, like, <laughs> <laughs> just being able to, like, understand, but also find somebody that you know and trust. Because, again, like, that's how I've been able to navigate in this life. In the, because, again, like, I've been able to uh, network with people that knew more than me. No, that's really important. And you talk about you talked about schools when I asked, like, that open-ended question. I appreciate you answering it in a detailed way. But, like, with with athletes now, with student athletes, like, is it, you think it's going to be more important to just go to the school that gives you the most opportunity, whether it's scholarship or because like, if I'm near my hometown, like where I grew up, I go for the hometown team because I can use my name, image and likeness. Do you see like a shift happening with people going to like whatever school that suits them a little bit more? Yeah, I definitely think that because now it's more like, oh, well, I mean, Duke is cool and all, but I can go down the street to Baylor and I can still make a killing just off of training alone. Yeah. Oh, you went to Baylor? Oh, you at Baylor? Oh, I'll send my kid to you. I'll pay you 40 bucks for um, 40 bucks. Yeah, that can definitely happen at Duke, but they don't really know you. They know you're on the team, but they don't know you know you. But they remember like, oh, I saw you at the gym. I remember when you were a little kid. I'm going to send my kid to you. So it's just kind of like those things that, again, like they know you, they like you, they trust you. So I definitely see a shift being able, now that they're able to use their name, image, and likeness. That's really cool. That's really cool. Yeah, so a question is coming in from Lyle, uh, one of my friends. Um, he's a former um, MLS soccer player, went to Wake Forest. Um, he said he wanted to ask it, but I'm not sure 
where he yeah, I'll just I'll just say it out loud. Sorry, it's easier. It's a long question. So I agree with you with the opportunity that name, image, and likeness might arise. But how do you feel about like you know with this additional income, it possibly could lower your you know your scholarship money or your Pell grant? Because like looking at the taxes, it's based on your previous year's income. Now, since you're generating a lot more revenue on your own now through training and scholarships it might negatively impact your potential scholarship amount now at the school, if you're getting academic or Pell Grant money. Oh, now I can't even hear. What's going on? Can you hear me? Uh, yeah, you just went on mute. I think. Um, How did that happen? Okay. Uh, because of the, I'm not sure. I think when Lyle went off unmute. Um, okay. She went on. Um, okay, I definitely uh, understand about the scholarships, um, and I again, that's kind of like another concern. I don't know how that's going to work because every student athlete is not going to want to monetize. They may. But it's not like they're going to all want like, oh, let me go ahead and start a business or let me go ahead and do influencer marketing. They may not they may not even want that option. But the fact that that option is there, I'd rather you have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. Um, so that's for the scholarship part. And then as far as Pell Grant, I know Pell Grant is based on your parents' income. Um, and that's the only reason why I was able to get the inc or Pell Grant. My mom was a um, – she worked for the state of Texas. Um, she's retired now. And then my dad is uh, an entrepreneur. He has his own mechanic shop. So I was able to get income based off their, I was able to get Pell Grant based off their income, not solely off of my income. Um, so I don't think it would affect their Pell Grant at all um, if it's based off the, solely off of the parents. And I hope I answered that question correctly. Well, let me know if I did. And let me know if I need to be more thorough okay no i think it's um i think it just speaks to the different like all the things that have to go on before right. um just student athletes get name image and likeness like right. there's so many different stipulations that are involved in um right. touch, touching on and then one more on and earlier and i know one more thing so um even though i was able to get Pell Grant, my parents had to claim my scholarship on their taxes and a lot of student, a lot of people don't know that. Um, and so she was like, "Yeah, y'all all got athletic scholarships." Like, so me, all my siblings got athletic scholarships. So none of us have student loans. But it's like, well, that's cool. But I still have to claim all that on my taxes. So mm -hmm. that's something that student athletes have to understand, or people have to understand as well. So it's free, but then <laughs> nothing's free. <laughs> nothing's, I mean, nothing's free. So um, yeah. No, that's really cool. Great question, Lyle. And uh, he's currently, you know, making the transition into the sports business, doing his nice. thing at Columbia. So it's always nice. good to have with him. Former Uber guy, so I'm sure he, he's um, chomping at the bit when he talked VC. So it's really cool to have <laughs> so many uh, so many familiar uh, faces on and uh, people in. So no, uh, thank you so much, Crystal. Really appreciate you taking the time. Um, yes. Hopefully people have more questions, but for me, um, obviously you came out with your first book. Um, do you have any more other books come in like courses? I know you got, you, you had a speaking engagement due to COVID that kind of yeah. uh, changed, but what, like what's next in your journey? Um, so I decided not to relaunch during COVID um, cause I tried to launch my online program like two to three times a year um, based solely on like the schedules of the student athletes um so usually it's in the fall in the spring and in the summer so spring was before COVID and that happened I was like no and the fact that you know during that time their seasons ended abruptly I was like yeah this is definitely not a good time yes I yeah. understand America is based off capitalism I don't want to do that for those student athletes it's like oh you have all this time now so let me help you start a business so it's like, <laughs> yeah. how about I take a step back and show them how I can be an asset to them for free. So I produce a little bit more content. Um, I'm able to go ahead and do like free 30 minute calls in exchange for testimonials if I did help them with anything. Um, and as far as like what's next in the pipeline, 
Um, I did have one that was canceled with Washington State University. So what we're looking now is to see how we can create an online curriculum, which is crazy because I have one. So we're trying to figure out like how to implement it with our student athletes. Um, and then I am looking to relaunch in the fall um, and then may possibly expand to like current and former student athletes where I'm still trying to figure out like how that's going to work because there are a lot of student athletes or former student athletes that have reached out to me concerning their businesses and it's like well that's cool and all but like I'm gonna need to get paid too like, uh, <laughs> so, so, we're trying, so we're trying to figure out like what's the best um fit for me and my company um and then of course I do have a conference that I'm putting on with another former student athlete that's happening next June 2020 so that's been pretty cool um yeah, give us that. more give us more I was hoping you was going to talk about that so give us more about <laughs> yeah uh, so uh, it's called the life after sports conference uh also and then Justin Bass has yeah. a question um okay, so we'll go ahead and answer Justin's question and then we can go ahead and go ahead and finish okay. talking about life after sports Right, perfect. Hey, Crystal. Nice to meet you. Thanks for taking time. Nice to meet time. you too, Justin. Moby, always a pleasure. Good to see you. Yeah, my guy. Justin's on. Sir. Sure. <laughs> um, so actually, this may be a very natural segue with what you were just talking about because I work with a lot of professional athletes, and one of the um, major areas that I find challenges, other than the financial literacy side, which is where Moby and I connected, is the career transition side. And I think those are the two biggest glaring holes in in what the leagues and their respective players associations are providing and training them for and you know i've, I've been noticing um i guess i would say a trend of sorry I dropped my microphone here. um i've been noticing a gro noticing a growing trend of people and or companies kind of independently working on like career transition and really it sounds like you're focusing very similarly in that same space but focusing more at the collegiate athlete level when in fact, really, what you're talking about is still the same thing, because whether right. you go pro or not, it's still a right. career transition from right. an athlete to what comes next. Um, I was just wondering, uh, to what extent are you, you know, talking, if at all, to, you know, the professional leagues as well, or is your emphasis solely in the collegiate level, and are your relationships um, through, you know, um, I guess, partnerships with various universities, or how are you connecting with people? Okay, yeah. Um, so right now I am focusing on the collegiate level. Um, however, I have had other people like, oh, you should do this for pro athletes as well. Um, I did have an internship with the NFLPA, so they did focus a lot on career transition, uh, depending on the department. I was in the marketing department, so I help uh, with the licensing, so that's totally different. Um, and as far as like the partners, yes, they are with current universities. Um, the first year and a half of my business um, or like the new program that I had created, I went to a lot of colleges and universities and they were not having it. They were like, well, we don't have the budget for it or this is too innovative. We want our student athletes to focus on their sport and their career and professional development. All right, I get that. So last year, I decided to go straight to the consumer, which is the student athletes, and that has helped a lot. And then so even though I had already built those relationships with those, with those universities and those uh, athletic administrators, again, they were able to follow their students into my program based off the relationship that I had and the relationship that I built with them. Uh, what I've learned is that like, no, is just like not yet or not right now. Um, it's not like no forever. And so now that this is coming again, now a lot of colleges and universities are like, oh, we remember when you reached out to us in like 2017, 2018, what can we do to help you come to our university now or now kind of like virtually right now? Um, so those how, that's how I've been doing it for the last few years. Um, but ideally, like I do want to eventually go into the pro space. Um, I don't feel confident yet, which is probably not a good thing. Um, but that's probably what happened in the next few years. Uh, that's probably what I want to happen after like my BC and residence role. Maybe they'll hire me full time. Maybe I decide to go work at 35 Ventures or like with Serena Williams, like BC Fund, I don't know. Um, but that's ideal, ideally what I want to do in the next few years is to work with current student athletes as well as professional athletes as well to help them create their businesses and career transition. Thank uh, you. And to, and, and to speak on that, uh, 
Yeah, Crystal, she she connect she's connected with everybody. Like she knows everybody. She connected me with the uh, Concordia University. I was able to do a little speaking engagement with Dan. He's uh, hyping me up. He's hyping so me between up. Between her and her brother and her uh, her other siblings, they 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 trying to get the sports uh, leagues on lock. So um, it's it's really great to see. Um, but yes, yeah, so next year you have the Life After Sports Conference uh, with another. Uh, lady that's doing great things in the you know student right. athlete uh, career space. So can you talk about that? Um, hopefully we'll be able to attend if everything yep. uh, from a health standpoint. Yes, okay. hopefully. Um, so basically the Life After Sports Conference is going to be a life-changing event for college athletics. Uh, what we want to focus on is mental health, but also connecting student athletes to business and career opportunities, whether it's through entrepreneurship, sports, or tech companies. And it will be through, or it will be with Classy James, who is another former student athlete. Uh, she's from the Bay Area. She works in tech at Cisco. And so what she's found out is that even though she works in tech, she doesn't know how to code. And she still makes about six figures a year. So she was like, well, I know I can do this. Other student athletes can do it as well if they only have the chance. And so what we're bringing is um, a two-day event. One will be focused on business entrepreneurship. I call that my baby. Day one is my baby. So like Moby, you already know that you uh, hopefully will be on day one if all we pray that everything goes well. Um, and we'll be talking about like business and entrepreneurship. Uh, we'll have a panel with NCAA administrators. Um, so they'll be coming again to make sure that the student athletes will be pre prepared in the fall. Um, and then we'll talk about day two, which is a mental health side. And what we learned is like, if you're not right between the ears, it doesn't matter what you have. It doesn't matter what business you start. It doesn't matter what scholarship. It doesn't, doesn't matter how much money you have. But if you're not happy, if you're depressed, if you have anxiety, if you have um, disorders or mental illness, like it doesn't matter. So we want to focus on that as well. Um, it'll be happening June 11th to the 13th in Atlanta, Georgia in 2021. So we're just really preparing for that. Uh, and, you know, for context, um, this is this is really great because, you know, I feel like everyone's talking about what, you know, student athletes should do. It's like you have the skills. This is what you can do. This is what you can do. But to have like an environment or conference where you can actually go and see the right. type of jobs where you can kind of fit in. Um, like we went to Afrotech is something similar in that sense of where yep. you can really get a hands on approach of which jobs you can apply for, which jobs. You, you saw my sheet. Exactly. So <laughs> it's going to be fun. <laughs> Um, it's going to be really exciting. So definitely going to have to get some promo. My guy, Russ, front office sports. If you guys aren't subscribed to his newsletter, make sure you guys subscribe. Um, definitely probably get to try to get some promo from there. Uh, with that being said, you talked about mental health. I think that's a perfect segue. Um, this whole front of Frugal Fundamental series, it was a six to seven week virtual workshop series in partnership with, you know, one of my guys, Jonathan Van Horn, um, the founder behind the shift program, which allows athletes, you know, to find their purpose outside of their sport. Um, because once you find your purpose outside of your sport, you tend to play better on the field. So uh, with that being said, I want to loop him in uh, so he can share more about his, uh, his, uh, his philosophy and his program. Um, but once again, Crystal, thank you so much for joining us. Always a pleasure to talk to you. Always a pleasure to connect. I um, hope you stay on because if people have more questions, um, right. they can ask. But um, with that being said, I want to get Jonathan in. Um, okay. to, to share, share about the shift program. Nice. If he gets on, let's see here. I'm still, you know, this is, this is Zoom. I'm still getting used to it. <laughs> You're looking good though in that hat though, Moby. Uh, it. It's just hiding the haircut, really. That's what it really is. <laughs> nice. Uh, Crystal, thank you very much. That was, that was fantastic. Uh, just thank hearing you. your words of wisdom and your experience as well. And just what you're doing for the student athlete is it is absolutely, absolutely fantastic. Uh, okay, my name is Jonathan Van Horn. I'm the creator of the Shift Course, and it's really assisting athletes to successful transition in life and in sport, and really helping athletes understanding who they are, understanding what makes them tick, uh, as well as understanding their purpose and their meaning, and how to really go after their passion, uh, not only in sport, but also in life. Uh, Shift is a framework to help navigate transition. Transitions in sport are significant moments that you can find success or really struggle and failure in the midst of sport, playing sports. And Shift uh, helps athletes in the process of really life of, of those transitions, so whether you're going to an off season, going to a summer break, uh, or you're graduating or transitioning to life after playing professionally. Shift creates a framework for the athlete uh, to really be successful in the midst of those transitions 
uh, in sport and in life. So again, I'm going to appreciate the opportunity to, to partner with you in this and the Fuqua Fundamentals and just the, this, this whole time. So thank you. No, no doubt. Appreciate it. So Crystal, where can people find you? Um, I feel like you're all over the place in terms of LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook. But if, you know, someone wants to reach out to you and get, you know, get a hold of you, where can they reach out? Where can they get your um, books? Um, you can all find me on LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter. What else? Instagram, all these social media platforms. Yeah. Um, but it's all Crystal Beecham. And I go no, ahead and put the no, no TikTok yet? No. Okay. I'm not that bored yet. So okay. I don't have, I don't have TikTok, TikTok yet. Um, maybe eventually. I thought about it when I went home for Texas. I mean, to Texas, but that didn't happen. Um, so you can find me on all those platforms at Crystal Beecham. I'll send in the uh, in the chat um you can also get my book for the other 98 percent um the ultimate guide for student athletes to go pro and entrepreneurship you can get that on amazon um yep. as well and amazon, then yeah. i'll send you um i'll also send my website so where you can find me online so yeah no nah, thank you so I much for joining us if anyone has any questions i'm going to open up the floor i think we i think there's like an unmute all button um but that's basically um that's 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 essentially it so thank you so much um so that was the last you were the last week of uh frugal fundamentals we're br definitely bringing it back um but i'm gonna take a little break rehash some things see how the first seven weeks went and then, nice. but, but this is going to be a more consistent thing um so really appreciate everyone that's been tuning in that's been following in um supporting um this will be repurposed as a podcast and on our youtube channel as well so once again, thank you so much. Always a pleasure to connect. And I really appreciate you taking the time. Yes, thank you for having me.